Thank you for oh, doing this. Thank you. With us. I'm really excited and hopeful. But I want to hear from you your goal. So I feel like I've had a really hard time controlling my emotions. I will be honest with you and say I probably would just deal with that, except that it's affecting my ability to be productive and to do my work well and to be the kind of mom that I want to be and the kind of human that I want to be. Um, so I want to figure out what's up. <laughs> That's what's going on. I remember for a decade, all I wanted was to be a New York Times bestseller. Is that when Girl, Wash Your Face was released? Yeah, that's when it was. And then it just became of a monster and success. Went. And I had no idea how, what I was supposed to do with that. Fame wears out the pleasure centers in your brain. Right. And so we have these two areas, part of the basal ganglia, um, that respond to dopamine. Yeah. When fame hits, it's like a lot of dopamine gets released. Right. And it and it feels awesome. But then it wears them out. Mm -hmm. And then you start feeling flat. Yeah. And it takes more and more for you to feel right. normal. Right. And you know what you're saying this? And I'm like, so much. I would do conferences or keynotes, or I just remember telling my ex-husband all the time, like, I can't feel this. I don't feel any of this. Right. I'm a long distance runner. It stopped being fun in all this. Like you, you talking about like sort of your pleasure center has been burned out. I'm gonna have to journal about that. Just like... We're just gonna have to repair it. stress in your house. extreme tell me when i was 14 my brother committed suicide i read that yeah um and, and you were at home i found when him. he shot himself yeah i found him and were you the only one home or was there other my older there? sister was also there um but he was supposed to take me to school and i heard it but i didn't know i couldn't process what i had just heard you know and i think on some level i must have known something bad had just happened and what was the experience like of finding him? Horrific. I couldn't understand what I was looking at. You know, like my brain could not process what I was looking at. The When I walked in, like, almost like the air was going out of his lungs. Um, and so I didn't know if he was, like, still alive. And I should try. I mean, in retrospect, given what I was looking at, he was not alive. He shot himself in the head. Um, but... I was little and I just was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I didn't want to wake up my sister because I didn't want her to be scared, even though she's was older than she you. was 20. You know, I just was like, I what am I what am I supposed to do? And I finally by the time I went to her room, I she was asleep. I knew that he was dead, but I didn't want to say it. So I woke her up and I said, I need you to come. Ryan hurt himself. He hurt himself because I just didn't want to say the words. Sometimes illness wins. Right. Right. I mean, sometimes people have heart disease right. and they die. Right. Sometimes people die of cancer. Right. He had schizophrenia and depression. Right. right. So, scans. So we did a study called SPECT, and SPECT looks at blood flow and activity. It mm -hmm. looks at how your brain works. Mm -hmm. And we just went over 187,000 scans on people from 150 countries. So I know what I'm looking at. Yeah. When we look at your brain, <laughs> there are big holes here. It's like, what does that mean? Holy crap. It means your frontal lobes got hurt and they're really sleepy. And I want you to think of the front part of your brain is the brain's brake. It stops you. Mm -hmm. 
from saying stuff you shouldn't say, from doing things you shouldn't do, from feeling intense emotion. It sort of settles down your emotional brain. And why it really doesn't look like ADD, it looks like trauma is because your temporal lobes here, they're sleepy as well. Okay. And it was just ADD, I'd see a little low activity here and everything else would be fine. You hurt this mm -hmm. and you're gonna be more emotional than you wanna be, more distracted than you wanna be. And because you're a high achiever, mm -hmm. it's gonna frustrate you. Yes. And that's gonna give you stress. Yeah. And so our goal, and I'll show you in a second, is to fix that. Right. And we can if you do what I ask you to do. Okay. And that's a big thing. And everybody around here knows that the people who really fall in love with their brain and trust me and do what I ask them to do, their brain gets better. Right. Um, here, this is sleepier than I want it to be. This big red area is here. So you're probably a visual person. Mm -hmm. um, but your cerebellum is sleepy. I want you to keep exercising, mm -hmm. but I want you to do a coordination exercise if you can. Dance, tennis, table tennis, really helpful for the brain. Okay. And your emotional brain is lit up. And it was taught to light up yeah. because you never knew when it was going to go wrong. So you never knew when craziness was about right. to break out. And so what that did is it took your emotional brain and now you're always watching. Right. And that was trained yeah. in you. Treatments like EMDR calm it down. Mm. And so if I can strengthen your frontal lobes mm -hmm. and calm your emotional brain, mm -hmm. you're gonna be so much happier. And the pleasure centers, which are right here, are a little sleepy. Yeah. So I wanna activate those by teaching you how to drip dopamine consistently and not dump it. Mm -hmm. And that's why I don't want you drinking, because drinking dumps it. Yeah. Like takes the dopamine you have and which makes you feel good. Yeah. But it's a fix that'll fail. Yeah. And the, the more we can get rid of those and then put fixes that help you feel better now and later. Yeah. As opposed to now, but not later. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. I am tripping out. Is it possible to not drink? Yeah. Yeah, so actually think... this last week I didn't drink because I had just come back from Hawaii where I had a lot of vodka. And I was like, <laughs> all right, calm down. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it is. Forever or like if I'm in a special occasion. <laughs> I was with, I was having breakfast with my boyfriend this morning because he did this too. He was like, you know he's gonna tell you not to drink, right? And I was like, oh, he's gonna tell you not to drink. He's gonna tell you to stop having so much coffee. I was like, you're right. Cause he's extremely healthy and I'm close. <laughs> so never, Never, not even like well, one so, drink, one a week. So I have scanned and treated 300 NFL players. And one of my players signed an $88 million contract. He's going to play. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, if you're going to do this, you got to do everything else everything right. Everything else, okay. And so you just have to ask yourself, what's the payoff? Right. And what's the risk? Right. Okay. I mean, if you have a drink a month, is it a big deal? No, but it's not helping. Right. And I want us to rehabilitate your brain. Mm -hmm. Part of my goal is to get you to love your brain and then to never hurt it, <laughs> right? Just like you love one of your children. Yeah. You would never hurt them. And alcohol's not its friend. <laughs> Even so though the delicious, marketers- though. The marketers would have us believe it's a health food and it's right. complete crap. Right. <laughs> so our goal is to make this better. I was like joking about there being holes in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> I was totally kidding. So if I look down from the top, it's sort of okay. Yeah. 
I look up from the bottom, it's not okay. Mm. We, you don't want this. Yeah. You don't want to go into your mid forties or fifties because what happens is over time it gets worse. If, if your emotional brain is right. overactive and your frontal lobes are sleepy, yes. your frontal lobes knowing it yeah. can't break yes. the emotion. Right. Yeah. But it's tapping into the little girl who could have rather to stop hurting himself. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the bridge back. And that's where EMDR is so cool because it, it, it'll, you just start with, okay, what happened? Mm -hmm. What are you thinking and feeling now? Take an incident with the kids or with your community or whatever, your boyfriend. And then they'll get your eyes going back and forth. That's part, it's called eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. And it'll sort of take you back to when it started. Mm. And then it'll calm it down. Mm. It's really cool. Okay. And very interesting. It's fascinating. Cool. So I, I think that'll help a lot. And then um, I want to put you on Happy Saffron Help. It's so good. I love it. It's been shown to be helpful for focus, for memory, for mood. Great. And then focus and energy. That's a way to, especially when your team is going, I need you to look at those. Right. Take two or three of those. It's sort of my version of Adderall, but it has no side effects. Okay. But don't take it late in the day. Okay. Um, and then if you're feeling anxious, something like GABA calming or theanine could be useful. You don't have to take the multiple vitamin. Uh, I'm going to give you all the aminos you need and the protein shake. Okay. Awesome. Questions? Hmm. It all makes sense. <laughs>